Hello everyone, Nubkex here. Welcome back to Nub Raids. And in today's video, it's the third video of the day. We have news about the upcoming Clan vs. Clan tournament. So we're going to dive into that. Uh, we're talking about 10x events today. Before we do, though, a bit of real world stuff. Uh, so I was actually reached out uh, by one of the members of our community that he is uh, doing a fundraiser uh, for himself. So this is Anonymous. That's his in-game name, or Anthony is his real name. Uh, so he just sent me this. It's on GoFundMe. And uh, he's raising money uh, for motor neurons disease. Same disease that Stephen Hawking's had. Uh, he has it as well. So it's, yeah, it's just about looking to save up money to help pay for some of the bills and some of the debts that has accrued due to the medical expenses for that. So look, I invite you guys. I'll link it in the description. You can go and look at it. I have donated myself. Um, so yeah, I just invite you guys to go and look at that and to consider donating, right? Instead of buying some shard packs, consider donating to that or again there's there's plenty of people out there as well that need your donations so yeah but again he's a member of the raid community so it's something that's well worth looking into right let's dive into then the 10x event for today oh my or not for today but for tomorrow and the next day also worth noting i usually stream whenever clan v clan starts off so for example right now usually 19 hours and 43 minutes from now my stream would be kicking off here on youtube not gonna be happening tomorrow uh, I'm going to the vet with my puppy. <laughs> so yeah, our puppy needs medical treatment as well. <laughs> I don't have a GoFundMe though, but uh, not this time. Uh, but no, uh, going to the puppy with the vet. She's got some pretty serious stuff wrong with her. Uh, so yeah, won't be here for that. But anyway, look, be back. Might do a stream maybe on Tuesday evening or Wednesday. I'm not really sure. We'll play it by ear. We'll see. So. Back to the actual business at hand. Tuesday, the 9th of May, that is tomorrow. 10x event from Ancients and Sacreds, and it is going to be none other than Arima. Ooh. This is a big one. Arima is, in my opinion, a 5 out of 5 in both Arena offense and defense. Just an absolutely insane champion. In my opinion, the best defensive nuker in the game, including all of them. He is literally the best. Uh, and she is top three, at least, for live arena. Uh, there's also Rotos, and there's Taras up there as well. She beats Rotos pretty hard. Hard counters him, I would say, in fact. Uh, Taras is a bit more of a close battle, but she's insane. Why is she so good? Part of it, or a big part of it, is this passive, Demon Slayer. Enemy ignore defense effects are uh, decreased by 50%. This really neuters a lot of the top nukers, right? So Rotos' uh, big nuke is a block uh, ignore defense nuke. He really weakens that. Jorgid, Baron, everyone, the new fusion, uh, Jetney, she's going to weaken her as well. Weakens so many of these nukers. Savage set weakens it all, which is huge. Enemies from Demon Spawn cannot inflict critical hits on this champion, and she cannot land weak hits on enemies or champions from the Demon Spawn faction. This makes her way stronger against Duchess, so she can still fight against Duchess, and makes her very resilient to things like Kandrophon. Uh, to Mortu Macabre. She really neuters Mortu Macabre as well. So yeah, she's just insane because of that reason. Demon Spawn are so, so strong. Um, her skill set's pretty good then. Her A1 is a chance for decreased attack. Uh, I could put decreased attack on other enemies if it crits. You're not really going to build her with accuracy and this isn't going to be such a huge deal. Her A2 is insane. Three turn cooldown, triple hitter. Each hit decreasing the target's defense by 5%, which stacks up to 30%, and increasing her defense by 5%, stacking up to 100%. So in a longer fight, it's just going to make her tankier and tankier and make your enemy squishier and squishier. If she kills somebody, she instantly activates her AoE skill for free, which is nice. Her AoE skill then is three-turn cooldown, AoE attack, places provoke for one turn. Again, you're not really going to build her with accuracy, but the debuff cannot be blocked or resisted if the champion's from the demon spawn faction. So she will land provoke on Duchess, on uh, et cetera, et cetera. I think they are immune to it if they're under stone skin, um, cause stone skin just stops everything prop, I think, but it will go past block debuffs and stuff like that. So uh, yeah, she is insane. Also has an 80 resist aura for arena battles, which is not essential, but it's useful. It can definitely filter into some niche compositions. Look, I think Harima is completely busted. I mean, really, she should probably be nerfed. I don't know, man. People really don't like nerfs. Let's say even if she's not nerfed, even if nothing ever changes and let's say more power creep happens in the game and a year from now there are just better and stronger champions, I still feel like she's still going to be relevant because of this passive. She will still be relevant. She'll still be insane. 
Yeah, Harima. Harima's just nuts, right? I think if you are close to your ancient mercy, if you're into your sacred mercy, and you've got some shards to spare, it could absolutely be worth pulling for her in a 10x. Bearing in mind, though, your chance is still very, very small, but it could be worth a dice roll if you're close to your mercy time, right? So uh, what I mean by that is if you're like, ah, if I pull like five sacreds and I get a legendary, right, from my mercy timer, you've calculated it up and you're very, very likely. If you're within like, I don't know, 50 ancient shards of maxing this out and getting a legendary, I'd say it's probably totally worth it for the, the shot to get the best defensive nuker in the game. On Wednesday, May the 10th, we're going to have a 10x for Frisk. It's for Crisk. Everybody loves Crisk. So we're actually going to we're going to run out of top tier void legendaries that have been in a 10x event in the last like two weeks. We're going to run out, guys. So here's another one. Another one to add to the list. A bit of a different flavor. We've mostly had arena focused champions in 10x events from voids over the last while. Crisk is really not an arena focused champion. He's not bad. Again, early mid game, even into some of the late game. But he does fall off um, after that. He's still, he's still decent, though. He's still decent. He's mostly, I'd say, a Hydra champion. He's really good against Demon Lord clan boss as well. Brilliant for a lot of Doom Tower bosses, too. Just a great sort of progression champion. Uh, and then brilliant against Hydra. He's got a fantastic passive. Puts out a really big shield at the start of the fight, which is good. Of course, this shield can be buff stripped, which is for the weakness of this shield. Uh, it's not protected, so it can be stripped away. But then he can also put out decreased defense and decreased attack for a turn on the attacker when hit. One interesting thing about this is in Hydra, let's say the Head of Wrath does an AoE attack. If Krisk is, let's say he's second in my team order, um, let's say Duchess is first place, Krisk is second. That's a very classic combo. Krisk uh, gets hit. So Duchess takes the full brunt of the hit. Krisk in second position gets hit. He will then put decreased attack on Head of Wrath. And the AoE hit then travels through your team, it will be reduced by that decrease attack. It's part of what makes him so powerful as a protector. You need to have him pretty far up your turn order. It's a little bit awkward if you're running with an Inquisitor Shamael type team instead, because you probably want your damage dealers in front. You don't want Krisk in front and getting turn meter boosted too. He also has an AoE provoke on a three turn cooldown that puts increased defense on himself and speed on your team. Uh, so that's a really solid move, again, for Hydra, the Provoke, and just for Doom Tower Waves as well, the Provoke, the speed buff, helps him survive through. Century Bigger, he's got a three-turn AoE, puts ally protection on the rest of your team for two turns, and two continuous heal buffs on this champion for one turn. Now, he does increase those buff durations, though, so he ups the continuous heals to a two-turn, and they will stay on him, and the ally protection is basically always going to be on. This is, again, part of what makes him so strong is not only is that passive protecting, but the ally protection is protecting your other champions. He is easily able to survive the damage coming in because he is so tanky himself. He's going to have increased defense to reduce direct damage to him. And then he can heal up with continuous heals from the damage he's taken from the ally protection as well. This lets him mischief tank as well in Hydra. He has the most buffs because of this, and he will get targeted and just increasing your ally buffs for Hydra is just huge utility as well. And the AoE decreased speed with a 50% chance. Very solid A1 too. It doesn't get to use it too often. He can be very strong with counterattack accessories. And ideally, I'd say for Hydra, two revenge accessories and one blood shield accessory would be perfect. It can be tricky though. He's very stat intensive, right? He's gonna need lots of speed, Lots of resist and accuracy and lots of HP and a, even a good chunk of defense to survive in Hydra. But he's a beast. I use mine in Hydra. No surprise. He is insane. Um, you guys kind of know about Krisk, right? If you are close to Void Mercy, is Krisk worth pulling for? Absolutely, yes. He's easily a top 10 Void. Um, a lot of people would consider him to be, you know, top 3 Voids, etc. Uh, I, I kind of see that. I mean, I will say uh, he's not in-game right now, but... For Hydra, obviously these days, I would say that you've got Acrisia, right? And uh, the, the new Ogren guy that's coming later in the week is is easily putting up a, a fight with Krisk for, you know, the best Void Legendaries for Hydra, right? So he's not uncontested there by any means. Um, but damn, damn, he's really good. <laughs> he is really, really good. So yeah, look, if you're close to your Void Mercy and you don't have a Krisk, uh, again, it could be worth pulling. Like, let's say, even if you got... It's easier with Void Shards. You still have a small chance, but like, hey, if you got 50 Void Shards and you can pull and definitely max out your Mercy and actually hit Legendary, and you don't have Krisk, and he'd be helpful for you in Hydra in particular, I would say, it would probably be worth going for then as well, right? Pulling around Mercy System with 10x event. 
is the lesson. If you haven't tracked this, if you're not close to any of your mercy, you should skip both of these events, obviously. Um, and of course, bear in mind, we have the fusion uh, starting on Thursday. So don't mess yourself up for the fusion. It should be, uh, there should be a 2x Ancients, not this weekend, but the next weekend. There should be a Summon Rush event this weekend. Um, so that's what's going on there. Look, guys, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the multiple videos today. Uh, what have I done? Have I done? I think there's a, a oh, is there a spider tournament? No, Classic Arena. There's a spider tournament on right now with really, <laughs> really bad rewards. Cool. <laughs> Man, people were like, we hate the, the themed tournaments last week. Give us these shit tournaments. Give us absolute garbage. That's what we want. <laughs> Funny. I'll see you next time. Goodbye.